watching this series, it really feels like I'm watching two shows at the same time. Both give you a different feeling. And it, feels, it really does feel like you're wearing two different isekais at the same time. And I believe this does it way better than our Furuta does. It shows a great fleshed out of each side of the story. So you're getting some good on both sides, which I say is a plus, in my opinion. And way to go for is reaching the top five and enemy trending charts, you know. So I'm glad the series is doing well. And so let's start off with the spider. So spider has no name, and I shouldn't be using their original previous human name, which I do agree with. I shouldn't be doing that. It's their new names that I should be more concerned about. But the spider has no name. <sighs> However, I did find out that a certain someone gave a name called White or Shiro in the future. So I think I'll just call the spider Shiro for now. And we'll leave it at that. I call Shiro, you'll find out. And I know I, I did not look into wikis or anything. I did not. I just just happened so I happened to find out. And that's just how it happened. Now without further ado, let's talk about this. So she gets an interesting ability, you know, the senses, you know, something kinda of like the spider senses, but she regrets it immediately. Because it starts having the head hurts. Because there's creatures everywhere. There's danger everywhere. The reason why Spider-Man and spider senses work because he isn't surrounded by danger all the time. There are sometimes certain enemies after him. So that's why his head will tingle and it will hurt. However, with, um, poor little Shiro, everyone's out to get her. <laughs> she is weak. So when she tried to activate that ability, man, it, was, it must have hurt like a bitch. Man, no migraines can cure that, is all I'm saying. And now she she softs the ability, so there's no point in the ability in that world. And I did like the Spider Man reference. <laughs> yeah, baby, Spider Man. Yeah, however, she did get a very interesting one web control. With web control, the possibilities are endless. You can manipulate the web, the direction, and how you use it, the density of it. So she was shooting it, she can use it like a rail gun, she can use it like a reflector, even use it as a ninja trap and stuff. The possibilities were endless for her. But still, she risen up, but not too much to the point where she can face on humans. Because the humans were there and they were chasing after her. Then there were snakes, then more creatures, and then even when she get further down, these hornets are following her along with two, three snakes. And even after that, a very powerful earth dragon shows up and they just devoured the other creatures. However, I don't think it's. It, it, I feel like it has intelligence. I don't know, it's just me. I feel like it has intelligence. By reading the title, we'll see what it means but later on. Now, let's go on the human side of Slain, or they'll call him Shun for short. Um. You can tell he's a hero. He does has the the typical main character Izakai kind of guy. However, I'm not just pleased with him. Like I said before, his character doesn't come off too dense or come off too annoying like the average Izakai you'll see or dungeon thing you usually watch. Despite I do enjoy some of those shows sometimes. The main character sometimes irk me with their cliches and their constant just BS. But this, him, not so much. I like the dude. He is well balanced in a way. Not only that, he also has this rival dude who kind of even makes things better. It makes him very light. Let me put it like this. In most of these kind of isekai, just they always try to make the main character look better by showing it's completely one dimensional. Jerk, dirt bag, who's a total muscle dude, who's a jerk to women. It's just, just all the cliche things. And, and then MC comes in and he beats them up so easily, and all the girls are impressed. I hope writers now know that formula does not work. It doesn't. It's cliche, you see it coming, and it's just not impressive, in my opinion. Like, oh wow, I've never seen that before. 
But giving the jerk a personality, a goal, a rivalry with the main character, now that's something you can go for, making him a jerk, but not too two-dimensional, but make him three-dimensional. Now that can help your main character, who probably is generic and plain, to actually look better. You know, sometimes a hero needs a good bad guy to see the hero shine, and that's how I see it. Hugo is that guy. Apparently in the past, these two never really got along, and even in the next life, they still don't get along, and this dude has his ego straight to his head even more, because despite how he talks a lot, he can walk the walk as well. He is very strong, especially with fire magic. His, um, even his ideals conversed with um, Sean's, where he believes just work with what you got and that's it. Trying anything else is meaningless, where Sean probably believes in trying everything, you know? Who knows? You might be good at it, you might be bad at it. We'll never know until you try. So I like that. Then we got another character, Yuri, who's all about her god. And I believe it's the administrator she's listening to, who knows, but she's obsessed with leveling up or something, and she's kind of coming off annoying, really annoying. Like, ugh. But then, as they were teaching, um, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, the Earth Dragon shows up. And this thing looks like a freaking T-Rex. I guess Earth Dragons are T-Rex. Okay. I can, I can let that fly. <laughs> it's still very interesting. Um, but before that, I should also talk about Faye. Faye was awesome in this episode. Man, you know, you thought Faye was just to be that mascot that just be, oh, just, just on the shoulder and just be the comic relief or something, but nope, they shine in this episode, man. Like, damn, she was even good even with um, shooting out the water, you know, all, and all the other students are failing, but then she comes out of nowhere as this tiny little pet and just does, to show them how it, how it does, man, that's nice. But then Earth Dragon shows up, kills the teacher, by the way. And then, of course, this dude comes in without a plan. This guy needs to learn what it means to be a hero. You know, you can come in for a fortune and fame, but heroes are never truly chosen, but born. Just like in Beastars, in a way. How the guy, the principal, talking about, well, the headmaster, talking about Beastars. How, um, they're not chosen, they're born, you know? You gotta have that, you can't just have strength to be a hero alone. You know, you need to have that compassion, that self awareness, that sense of justice, you know. And Hugo didn't have that, which is perfect for his character, you know. Him being that villain that grows up from rivalry to arch enemies in the future. That's the only way I can see this going, in a way. Now, hopefully, it won't be too fast, but they slowly season it up as rivalry to enemies. Something kind of like Naruto and Sasuke, but not too dramatic. <laughs> but more action and head on, you know what I'm saying? I, I see this going play, so I'm looking forward to it. So they take down the, the Earth Dragon, and it makes Shun look like a hero, which he is, in a way. You know, He admires his brother, and he was seeing what his brother would do in this situation, and took the affirmative action. But at the same time, we had Faye doing amazing stuff. But then she was just staring at the thing. Yeah, there was dead. The hand was freaking ripped off, by the way. And just like, okay, what's going on here? And then she told him to check the stats and says, Game Ken Killer. I'm like, whoa, Ken Killer. Same thing as our Spider Shiro also has. So I'm wondering, it would be interesting how um, Faye wants to apologize to Shiro one day. And Shiro is just trying to get out the, the dungeon and survive by any means necessary. So it would be interesting as a parallel stories, these two level up, you know, in kind of the same way but a different direction. You know, they start off on point um, route one, but then there's um, two and three, and one takes two and one takes three, and they just level up different ways by their experiences. And then they finally meet each other, all next level out. That would be awesome if that would happen. <laughs> I, I look forward to that. Like I said, this show has a lot of possibilities of where it can go. And, of course, there's only one way it goes. But just me thinking about how it can go still excites me, you know. 
So yeah, I'm glad the show's doing well. I'm glad that people are enjoying it and stuff. And one thing I want to talk about, this is just out of nowhere, I was watching Mother's Basement, thinking about this, and seeing how it feels so good to have a female protagonist in a isekai, like, with an outgoing attitude. Are, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, sorry. Those I love this anime. This is not the first anime with a female character with an outgoing attitude in a freaking isekai. C come on. Yes, there's mine. He did mention mine from the sense of a bookworm. But this has been going on since the freaking 80s. East Kai has been existing for years. It's been going on since the freaking 80s. And there have been women who have been in East Kai with outgoing attitudes, okay? First of all, there's that one show, Twi um, Twinny Witches, for crying out loud. There's Fuji Yugi. There's all kinds of East Kai. In fact, most of the East Kai back then, most of the main characters were females, you know? It just I know this is out of feel, but I just it was strain me. If anyone here watches Mother's Basement and if they watched that video where he was talking about the anime that's coming out and he was praising Spider, but at the same time he was saying, Oh, it's the first one it's guy to see someone out going like What is up with these new people so much? Always acting like, Oh, this is the first time this happening or it feels fresh or something like first time No, no, it's been going on for years. It's just you just haven't watched enough anime, I guess. You know, I'm just just not trying to call you out. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Man. I'm just I'm just done with some some anime tubers sometimes where it is I want to act like they even have the bar stuff. Anyways, I'm not gonna get on that. I, I shouldn't do that. No, this video's gone long enough. So, anyways, I enjoyed this episode, of Spider. I say this is one of my favorite ones so far, and it's really enjoyable. So, if episode three hasn't got you in. I don't know what will. So anyways, if you like this video and enjoy what I do, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. This has the background on Madame. Signing out.